What's up everybody, Daniel Dan Sports News Flores here giving you the second episode of the Dan Sports News and Friends podcast. Today's guest will be Harrison Rieger, who played in the inaugural season of LeVar Ball's JBA Basketball League and continued playing on the JBA USA team in the fall and winter. Harrison will be continuing his basketball career in El Salvador in a few weeks. He gives his experience on what it was like to play in the JBA with LaMelo and LiAngelo and more. Check it out. What was it like to play in the JBA this past summer? Um, it, was, it was definitely something new. Um, obviously, it was a new league, and I was taking a risk on myself to see where it would take me. Um, and hopefully, the good thing is uh, it turned out pretty good for me so far. Um, uh, it was definitely... A, really fun experience definitely got to know a lot of people um obviously know the ball family now pretty close to them uh personally i got to go overseas with them so just uh building relationships is pretty cool i'm just playing a game i love so uh, what, really good so yeah so what was it like to play actually with Lamelo and liangelo mm-hmm. what was it yeah, like to play with them that? what was it like to play with Lamelo and liangelo um, it was cool. Um, I didn't think of it like as a starstruck thing because I mean they're obviously these very popular uh, people, and um, but it was definitely cool playing with them. Um, I don't really think of them really as uh, like starstruck when you see them uh, since I'm pretty close to them now and they know me and I know them. But it was definitely cool just get to play with those guys and just get to play with new players and stuff like that. And then what was it like to compete in their version of the All Star Weekend and being in the dunk contest, right? Uh, yeah, three point contest. What was that like? Um, it was cool. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know what thing until like a before I was playing uh, doing the three point contest. I'm gonna get jello. I lost by one. I think it was because I got hot on the last rack, and then I, I took a fade away because I thought I was gonna make it and I missed it. But if I made that one, I would have went to the next round. But I missed. It, it was still it was cool overall. Um, I played a really well in the All Star game. Um, you know we lost, but it was still it was still a fun weekend. So. And then going into the playoffs. How was that for you, like, playing with the team and then losing in the playoffs? Ultimately, what was that experience like? Um, it definitely not fun to lose in the first round. Um, our team probably faced the most adversity, I think, in my opinion, throughout the whole season. Uh, we lost uh, a couple of players, had some new players come in. We kept trying to click with chemistry. I don't know if it really ever was, like, good chemistry between our team, unfortunately, but... Um, it was fun. Unfortunately, we lost our coaches, too. Um, that was midway, midway through the season. I had to get accustomed to new coaches. Um, even though the guys they got to go, I think uh, they are great coaches. But, um, yeah, you don't want to lose the first round. But, I mean, I mean what are you going to do? Right. So, I do know that you played with Kizo on the team, Kizo Brown, who yeah. was a very, like, highly, you know, a great basketball player who we had all watched on Bala's life growing up. Um, what was it like yeah. playing with him? Um, I didn't really know too much about him going in. Um, I heard that he was uh, pretty popular, I guess, in the Chicago area playing when he was younger and coming through up high school. And then, unfortunately, something happened to him, and uh, it kind of like set him back a little bit. But I was full time with him. Um, it was definitely different trying to play with him. He had different playing styles, and he was trying to get accustomed to... Uh, playing along each other, and we just slept them there. Right. So then talk a little bit about the experience playing on the JBA USA team, um, playing overseas. What was that like for you? I think it was definitely it was probably the highlight, even though uh, probably the highlight of the JBA, in my opinion. Um, the fact that I got to go to, what, 18 new countries that I've never been to, never thought of the guys that like at least... I would, you always want to go to the big ones like maybe England, uh, the United Kingdom, see London, see maybe Spain or something like that. But the fact that I got to go to 18 countries, um, get paid to play, I mean, everything pretty much just all expenses. Um, just playing against, just playing different playing styles uh, against Europe teams. They play a slower pace, but we, when we played against those teams, we sped up the pace. And obviously the scores weren't like they usually are, probably in the 70 to 90 range. We put it up to over 100 probably, I think, every single game. So, I mean, it was just... It was cool, and you just got to play against legit professionals, so um, it, was, it was cool in that sense, too. Right, so 
explain a little bit about the Ball and the Family documentary. I know you guys ended up becoming a part of that because you were in the JVA team. So what was that experience like, having all those cameras around you, following you guys? Um, it was cool. Um, it was definitely something different. I mean, I never really had that in my life, so. Um, but it, you, once, you, once you're around them for a little while, you, you don't really pay attention to them. I mean, they're just there. But it was, it was definitely cool being a part of that. Um, just being a part of that TV show, too. Just all credit to the ball family just for getting me to where I am. Right. So, um, at the end of the season, the JBA USA season, I know you weren't playing as much. Well, in the beginning, you weren't playing as much, but as the season went on with the USA team, yeah. you started playing, and you played very well. Um, mm -hmm. What happened with that? Um, I, don't know, I, I guess, I mean, I guess whatever reason the coaches thought, maybe, I don't know, just, you can't, I mean, it's hard to play everyone. Um, I mean, they pretty much, we had four players pretty much play 40 minutes a game, and then had one player not playing 40 minutes a game, and then you have to kind of hear bend your, your sub in throughout that, that one player. And uh, a lot of the times I feel like I didn't get the uh, playing time that I thought I deserved, kind of. But um, it kind of, I mean, even though it wasn't always the most fun to be on the bench, I mean, you always got to support your teammates and stuff like that. And I got in there towards the end. I got to play a lot. And I started playing 30, 35 minutes a game towards the end. And it was just cool just playing, just getting that atmosphere and that experience and just playing with the guys. Right. So when the JBA tour ended, what happened, like, when you got back home? What did you do? Um, I know basketball is now your career, so did you have a job? Were you working, or did you just take a break, rest for, like, the last few months? What did you do? Um, I've been training, uh, just working on my basketball game, just trying to eat a lot more, put on weight. Unfortunately, I actually was sick the last, like, few weeks, and I actually lost 15 pounds. I was probably oh, 187. Man, that's not good. I was, like, 170, like, a few days ago, so I'm just trying to put the weight back on before I leave. For El Salvador, but it was cool. I didn't know what we were gonna do. I was told um, uh, a few months ago that they wanted me to go to China with them. I still don't know what their plans are. I heard that they are doing something with the championship this season. I think it's more of an overseas kind of thing. I don't know if they're gonna do another season. But um, do you know when? That, do you know when that's so, gonna take place? Like before um, the summer, told, or maybe, I was told maybe around the summerish, maybe a little bit before the summer. I don't, I don't know exactly. I don't know really all the details. Um, these are just, I mean, the rumors that I'm hearing that I'm trying to pick up on. But I felt like more in my interest instead of just going one month more overseas, maybe with those guys. Um, I felt like it was better to take the opportunity that I had to go play in the top league overseas, get the real experience playing against legit professionals throughout a few months period. I uh, get to play with some legit organization that has GMs and all that stuff. So. I thought it was better for my career, maybe just take that step and just, just, just go with what I got. So how did the team actually, like, reach out to you and find you? Um, and what was that experience like? Um, I was, they didn't reach out to me directly. Um, I was talking to a guy, and he told me, I met a guy in Chicago during one of our JBA games, before a pregame, and he told me that maybe if I ever needed help trying to get overseas, he could try to help me. So, I mean, I reached out to him because I was trying to get overseas. And uh, he told me he had me. He told me he connected me with another guy in El Salvador, and I took a risk on myself. I mean, I paid to get out there. Um, I paid for my flight, the, the house I stayed in, which wasn't wasn't the house wasn't much at all. I was staying with a couple of players, and it was just like a team house. So it wasn't too much, but I was just taking a risk on myself, trying maybe uh, take another route. Uh, like obviously, instead of going to college route, I went the JBA route. Instead of maybe trying to wait for an agent to pick me up and then try and get called onto a team. I took another route where I wanted to risk myself, try to battle myself, and get over there. I got a two, two contract offers, and uh, I took a, took the offer from Altona de Santa Cate and in El Salvador. So. Right. So I know a few months ago, I actually was able to do a written interview with you. Um, all the listeners can check that out at dansportsnews.com. And you actually said that this was one of your goals, was to play professionally overseas. And um, now you're actually doing that, which is congratulations to you on that. Um, so, do you know how long the season is there in El Salvador? Yeah, it's, um, it, it, for some reason it's like a little bit different. Like usually, like most overseas, to, most overseas leagues do like the NBA has like six, seven months. For, uh, they do two seasons in a year, so they do it's a three month season, then a month break, then another three month season. So I fly out next Monday and it's on the fourth. So I get down there, the first game's the 27th of April, so I'll be down there for almost a month and a half, um, uh, training camp and stuff, preseason, all that stuff. And then we'll get rock and rolling, 
for the next three months. I'll be back most likely in July, and uh, if they he picks me up for another season, I'll be back there until early December for uh, for another uh, season. Right. So, will you be entering the NBA draft or anything like that? Um, I haven't thought about it completely. I don't know if I really want to. I mean, you can just enter the draft. I mean, I already I know personally that obviously I'm not on anyone's draft boards or scouting right. performances right now. So, I mean, I feel like that wouldn't be the greatest decision because obviously I, I would know if I entered the draft right now, I wouldn't get drafted. It wouldn't be a smart decision in my opinion. So, I'm going to try and go overseas right now, try to build a resume. Uh, maybe get to Europe next season, maybe try and go play somewhere, maybe Germany or Lithuania, somewhere like that. Hopefully, team picks me up another top league. Uh, maybe in two years, hopefully, work my way over to Euro League, maybe, and see what I can do from there. Um, I mean, right now, I'm considered technically in my sophomore season of college. So, I mean, if I go another two years, hopefully, maybe try and get to the Euro League or something like that. Uh, by the age of 22, that would be like a four year thing, and then maybe. If I play well enough, and I think that maybe I can translate my game to the NBA, maybe try to put my name in or try and go just maybe free and stuff like that. So, I mean, I've still got a little ways to go, but, I mean, these are just little future plans that I might have. Right. I respect that you're being honest with it, because I know lots of guys can just enter the NBA draft, and that mm -hmm. really doesn't necessarily mean anything. But, you know, mm -hmm. you have the right idea of wanting to, you know, play pro overseas, build up your resume, um, play for teams, because you have time before... Um, you can get into the NBA. Like some of these guys have been playing till they're thirty, um, and still haven't made it to the NBA. So I respect yeah. your decision of doing that and doing what's best for you. Mm -hmm. Um, also one last thing before we wrap it up. Uh do you have do you think that you'll be returning to the JBA to play this summer if they have it again? Um, I do not think I will be returning, unfortunately. I mean, I'd still love to play with those guys if I could. But if I'm under contract with another team, I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to sign another contract to go play with another team. So um, it was definitely fun playing with the JBA. I still don't know what the future holds, but um, it was definitely fun getting to play with those guys and just the experience all around. Um, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a blessing to play with all those guys and just get the experience. Right. And one last question. Um, what was your like, reaction when you heard that LaMelo was going back to high school? What was your thoughts uh, on that? We, we knew that for a little bit before. We weren't really blindsided with it. Um, it was more of, like, I guess the media world and everyone else found out, like, at the same time. But we found out probably a week before that or, or more than that. Uh, we, we knew he was leaving uh, his last game in London. We found out probably a few hundred before that. Uh, we, we knew he was leaving. Um, so, I mean, we all just got prepared. We knew that even though he was leaving, he's a big part of our team that uh, still got to keep playing. I mean, we, we knew we saw the talent to win games, and we did when we lost, I think, one game when he left. I think we won, like, six or seven and one when he was gone. So, I mean, we still had a pretty good performance while he was out. All right. So, yeah, um, like I said, keep doing your thing. Um, I remember that one episode of Ball in the Family um, when you were the only guy there in the gym early in the morning practicing, um, getting shots up. What was that like? Um, we were moving to Lithuania. I think we were there for almost two weeks. Um, they had a gym. A lot of the places we went to really didn't have gyms in the hotels or anything like that. We're kind of like a kind of mini resort, kind of not like a legit resort. We like little palm trees and all that stuff. Right. But it was like we had our little hotel, and then we had walking distance, probably less than a quarter mile to the gym, which had the the basketball gym and the lifting room, probably a little bit right next to it. So I would get up in the morning before practice, just try to work on my game, get a little bit stronger. And just, I mean, since I was trying to make that my career, I mean, I know I couldn't take it for granted. And um, I know I just had to keep playing because I know you had to fight for playing time and stuff like that. So, I mean, try and get the coaches to recognize you in any way. So, so what was it like playing in those? Um, I know in the latest episode of Ball and the Family, like, you guys were in, like, a before the game, you were in a room that, like, wasn't very clean and there were spiders. Um, guys were, like, afraid of that. What was that like? And was that true or? That was, in, uh, that was in Macedonia. Um, that, yeah, that was probably one of the worst locker rooms I've ever seen. And a lot of the guys said that, too. Um, well, high school locker room was better than that. But, I mean, a lot of our coaches said, like, some, some teams uh, some teams overseas don't have, like, great facilities. I mean, that team was a good team. We, we ended up losing that team in Macedonia. They won the championship the year before that. Oh, okay, and we were wow. 25 points at one point in the first quarter. So, I mean, we fought tooth and nail. I hit a three-pointer with a minute to go to tie the game. And then they just... They hit a little, they hit a basket, we missed, we hit a foul, just to, 
the game got away from us a little bit in the last minute, but I mean you can't win them all. Um, but it was, it was definitely a little bit weird trying to go to that go to that place. But the the fans there were, were great though. Oh, and what's your opinion on LeVar Ball? I know people have so many different opinions on him and all the stuff that he says. I think he's a great person, um, doing great things for him, his sons and for the JBA. What is your thoughts on LeVar Ball? A lot of people think that uh, he's probably out too much, too much out of the way. for the comments he makes, but um, if you get to know him personally like I do, um, he's a great person. He has, a, he has really great visions. A lot of people think that they, just because he's so outgoing that people like don't want him to succeed in his, his business plans. But I mean, a lot of people don't think JB is going to go. JB is going. He's got water coming now he's from Lithuania. He's got a lot of things going. He's trying to help, do, help his boys get to the highest uh, basketball achievement they can get to. Um, he's trying to get them all playing on the same team in the NBA, hopefully. But um, he's definitely a great person to get to know if you know him. And I think he's a good idea, even though he does make some comments that a lot of people think that, oh, wow, but he's promoting his brand at the same time. So, like, even though he's saying stuff that people maybe not want to hear, he's still promoting his brand and people are still paying attention to him. And uh, people really can't keep their eyes off them, even though they say they don't. Yeah, so one more thing just for fun. Um, how did the Big Baller brand water taste? Is it good? Is it different from I actually, any? I actually, like, just came, I'm pretty sure, from, like, Lithuania last week or the week before. I think, like, two weeks ago, maybe. Two, three weeks ago. Um, I know it's, it's, like, right now, I think it's exclusively in California in a few stores right now. Oh, I know that they're trying to extend it, but, no, I, I could not taste it. But I, I wouldn't be surprised. It probably just tastes like water. I right. Mean, you can't really feel much like water, but, I mean, probably... To try to get it more pure, I think, than this mostly bottled water stuff. And yeah, so do you still keep in touch with all the other players from your team or any of the other guys in the JBA or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I still keep in touch. I actually talked to one of the guys last night. I was uh, talking to him. Well, I, I, yeah, we have a group chat with the guys from the JBA USA team and stuff like that. So uh, we still have we still send each other stuff and uh, we keep in touch. Yeah, we 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 all we all keep in touch. Yeah, that's good. So um, let the listeners know where they can follow you, um, what's your social media, and all that good stuff. I guess if you want to follow me, uh, Instagram is Rieger35. Uh, I think my, my Twitter got hacked, so I had to make a new one. Oh, okay. I think it's, like, I think it's Harrison Rieger underscore. And then, I don't know, just search my name on Facebook if you want to add me as a friend, maybe. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, yeah, well, I appreciate you being a guest, um, being the first guest on my podcast. Um, congratulations with everything. Good luck in El Salvador. I hope the best for you in your basketball career.